everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the BRICS compare instructions and the first instructions that we will be looking for or at are the contact instructions within the BRICS PLCs. Now I'm actually connected to my uh, uh, do more uh, BRICS PLC right here by way of my USB port which you can see flashing and what you'll see is that I'm currently connected and I'm currently in program mode. So let's uh, flip this over and we'll go into run mode. Hit OK. And we're reviewing the status of the program here. And what we're going to do is just look at the counter. And my counter instruction goes from 0 to 10 and it counts up. And then we have it self resetting just like we did with our counter. Um, instructions that we looked at previously and if we look at the actual contacts um, here are the contacts themselves so we're looking at counter zero the accumulator and we're looking to see if that's equal to zero if it is then the output turns on and in our case here it is equal to zero so you can see that my first output y0 is currently on right now then if we look down you'll actually see that we also have our um, if greater than if uh, or equal to or sorry not equal to first which is this one then we have our greater than then we have our greater than or equal to then we have our less than equal to in this case here our less than um, is actually on because the value is zero currently in our, in our counter so that means that y4 is on. Also you'll see that we have our less than or equal to 5 and that is also true so we have y5. So again we have these two uh, y4 and y5 that are active. So now you'll notice if I can see uh, all of my the counter and everything here. Let's just move that up a little bit so we see more of the contacts and I can actually go to my edit and we'll change that to 1 and we won't ask to confirm. Once we turn to 1 you'll notice that my contacts have now changed and this is my not equal flag so if it's not equal to 0 which is true now I have 1 that is activated. My 4 and 5 are still activated because they're still greater than 5. So now let's move the, the counter value up to 4 and once I do that you see that my status do, does not change however if we go 5 we write that in you'll notice that my not equal flag is still on however you'll notice that my um, greater than or equal to um, 5 is on so that means that y3 is now on and then at the end here we have it has to be less than or equal to 5 so it's or less than 5 which it is not so y4 is now off so y4 is off y3 is now on and now let's change this uh, counter value to the value 6 when we do now we have again not equal to 0 so y1 is on and then we have y2 is on which is greater than 5 and we also have the greater than or equal to flag on Y3. So that is our contact instructions within the BRICS PLC. Now we also have a couple of other instructions that we can utilize and that is our um, our compare date and time instructions and this is our first date and time and what we'll do is just go over to the edit mode and do is reduce that down a bit and if we double click on the date and time instruction to compare date and time what you'll notice is that we can compare date and time we can compare the date only or we can compare the time only and it sets the corresponding bits if it's equal to the second it comes before the second or set is first is after the second so again if it's greater than e, um, equal to or less than the previous time. So here are the two dates that we're actually implementing and we have the system uh, date and time um, 
output here. So when we, when we set the PLC to the current state and time, this is where the information actually goes into. And then we has our, have our user defined uh, date and time instruction, uh, UDT0. So in this case here, we're comparing the date only. So that is the uh, physical date, whether it's, uh, um, it's equal or if it comes before or after the second date. So that's it. That's the instruction itself. So let's uh, uh, get out of the edit mode. And what you'll see is we're monitoring here. Our date up here is we're October the 8th at uh, Sunday. And we have our second time here. That's October 7th. So because uh, one it's not equal, so that equal sign should not be on. Um, however, we need to start this instruction. In order to start this, what we'll do is force it. So let's do the force. And when we do, sure enough, the second date, or set if first is after the second. So, it, which is exactly right, and so C2 is now on, so we can use that further on in our program. And if, if the dates were different, then that's what we would have here. So if we look at our, our data view, you can see that I have our, our current date, which we're looking at as SDT0. And here is my user defined dates. So let's change this. We'll go uh, um, to the 8th, which is the same date. We'll write that in. And when we do, you'll notice that it's now equal to the second. So now the first bit is on C0. So that is our user date and time uh, comparing to a, another date and time. So again, very useful instruction. We can use this when we do um, a lot of our data logging and use that information. The last instruction that I'd like to uh, review is the date difference. So now we compare the two uh, time and date clocks and it will tell us the difference in seconds between the two uh, values. So let's uh, uh, energize this uh, instruction here by forcing it. We'll force it on and when we do what it will do is come up with a value here in our case here uh, 23,300 or 23,400 and what that represents is the number of seconds difference between the two dates. So you'll see here that we set our, our two dates currently, October 7th, um, the 8th, October 7th. And what you'll notice is that um, the difference is between zero. So it's uh, six hours and uh, 30 minutes or so. So right now it's set for Saturday. We'll just change that to Sunday just so that we can actually um, see that. It doesn't, it doesn't include in our case here, the, um, the date of or day of week. Uh, that we usually have. So let's go zero. There we go. So now they represent uh, Sunday. So what that six hours, 30, minute, 30 minutes is, is actually uh, converting that into seconds and showing us the difference between those two dates. Right. Now we could take the dates themselves and you see how in my uh, date view or my uh, data view, what we've done is uh, broken up those dates into year, month, day, day of week, and we have values here. Those values then can be represented on our contacts if we wish to do it that way too, and do it up the long way uh, in our program. So either way, um, it's totally up to you as the program programmer to decide which way is benef more beneficial and easy to read within your program. Okay, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can also help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.